Hi, it's midwife Nell here to talk about anatomy again. For this discussion, we're going to look at a side view. So when we look at medical illustrations, they almost always give us that front view that we are so familiar with. But what we often don't see is the side view to see where things lay and to be able to see it in a way that makes sense and not just a two dimensional representation. So I'm gonna start with the front view and then we're gonna switch things around. Hopefully this will help you understand the anatomy. All right, so here is the vulva. We start with our assessment, starting at the clitoris, going to the urethra, the labia minora, labia majora, the hymen, and then we go down the perineum and the rectum. There are some people who recommend a rectal exam for every birth. After we've gone top to bottom, we're gonna go superficial to deep. So we're gonna go from uh, the uh, introitus and the hymen. We're gonna look deep into the vagina to see whether there are lacerations in the vagina. They can be in the midline, they can be a little keyhole tear, or they can be off on the left or right side. Often when people have a deep tear, there's some confusion about how best to do the repair. And one of the things that I like to stress is that we want to be careful how deep we place our stitches. And I'll show you why. I'm gonna turn the model around. Bear with me while I do that. So here is the vagina. The pelvis is a potential space, so it's really very open. Here is our rectum. Here is our rectovaginal fascia. I'm gonna tip this down just a little tiny bit and see if I can straighten it out. Um, and these are the blood vessels that would be actually attached to the vagina and I didn't attach them, um, but I can do that. So this is a test run. I haven't done this before. So you guys get to see all of my mistakes and see how you know we can think in different ways by, by using three-dimensional models. So here's the vagina, it would end at the cervix. We don't have the cervix on this model. But if I have a deep vaginal tear, what's going to be immediately behind it is the rectum and rectovaginal fascia. If there's a tear in the rectovaginal fascia, that will need to be repaired. We don't want to do deep stitches in the vagina, however, because they could inadvertently go into the rectum. And depending on how far back in the vagina you are, they may be far enough back that we wouldn't necessarily easily feel them with a digital rectal exam. So I'm going to go ahead and take this outside model off just a little bit so we can see the muscles underneath. So we've got bulbocavernosus here. Uh, and then uh, transverse perineal going across like that. They're gonna support the uh, external genitalia. And then the vagina is free floating in the pelvis so that it can distend enough to allow the baby to be born. The rectum is somewhat free floating so that it can also distend past stool uh, and to compress and get out of the way for the birth of the baby. So when there is compression, the vagina is gonna push down against the rectum and then open up in the top. Sometimes we will get tears on the sidewall of the vagina and they may not be all the way out to the external opening. And for that reason, we want to be able to do a complete vaginal exam, even if the external genitalia appear intact. Um, we can get a keyhole tear, so just a little opening here that then goes through the uh, rectovaginal fascia and into the rectum. So that's a, a keyhole tear. So um, when we get those sulcus tears, where they can go through these blood vessels and there can be copious bleeding. Because the pelvis is somewhat open, we can get quite a lot of blood formation um, it, in, in the pelvis itself, in the pelvic sidewalls. So uh, we definitely need to find the bleeding vessels with sulcus tears and tie them off securely. All right, that is it for my little, my little um, demonstration here. I hope you found it helpful. And don't forget to be systematic in your evaluation, top to bottom, superficial to deep, 
and don't hesitate if you have questions to do a rectal exam or a rectovaginal exam to palpate to see if there's any defects in either the, the rectum or the vaginal mucosa. This is Midwife Nell signing off. Feel free to send me comments or questions and we'll make more videos uh, in the near future.